coming back! Front end. Take the front end. I hurt bad, Chuck. How about that? You're hurt, but you'll be all right. You're not dying. Where's the nearest hospital? Cebu City, sir. How far is that? 50 kilometers, sir. Mitchell, suppose you get down there and see if you can get some help up here. Aye, aye, sir. Do you know the way, Mac? I'll go with you, sir. Let's shove off. Any Japs around here? Only those up there, sir. spring of 1942, and this was the last of Motor Torpedo Squadron 3, which had taken General MacArthur and his staff through Japanese lines in their historic escape from Corregidor one month earlier. For the next three days, we hid out in a lonely, deserted lighthouse, licking our wounds, as it were, knowing neither what to do nor where to go. And you've got anything on that yet? I'm doing my best, sir. Not that I suppose it matters much one way or the other. I'd like to know what's going on in this war. All right, sir. We'll give it a try. Sorry, sir. What do you know? It's my favorite dance tune, too. <laughs> uh, I told you. We interrupt this program to bring you a special broadcast. This is the voice of freedom from United States headquarters at Corregidor. Batan has fallen. With heads bloody but unbowed, the Philippine-American troops on this war-ravaged and blood-stained peninsula have yielded to the superior numbers of the enemy. Blockaded by sea, cut off from all sources of help in the Philippines and in America, these fighters have borne all that human endurance could bear. But the decision had to come. Men fighting under the banner of an unshakable faith are made of something more than flesh, but they are not made of impervious steel. The flesh must yield at last. Endurance melts away. So Batan has fallen. But the spirit that made it stand a beacon to all the liberty-loving peoples of the world cannot fail. Well, that's it. You fellas still have those passes General MacArthur gave us? Yes. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, from now on, you're on your own. If you can get to Del Monte Airfield on Mindanao, they ought to be good for a priority one lift to Australia. Mindanao? But that's 200 miles. Our only chance is to split up, travel alone or in pairs. Otherwise, we'll be too conspicuous. Chuck, how about you leading off? The rest of us will follow at half-hour intervals. Hi, aye, sir. Jim? Hope to see you again, sir. Mike? Take it easy, Joe. Fred? Yes, Good luck, sir. Skipper? Good luck. Mr. Palmer? I think I'll go along, too, sir. All right. Bye, Skipper. Goodbye, Mitchell. So long, Mike. Watch that arm, Joe. So long, Jim. 
All right, if I come along with you, sir. Why not? There was a lot of walking for us after that. Along country roads, through jungles, in equatorial heat, sometimes waist deep in water, and all about us, people. Always people, moving, seeking to escape. Later, people spoke of the Jap flood, but there was no flood of Japs, not then. We were the flood. The Japs were just the rocks and the walls sticking up around which we, the flood, flowed. For two weeks and two days, we were on the move, pausing briefly now and then to bathe our aching feet and rest our weary bodies, always with people refugeeing from their homes. Until at last, we came toward a town where all the driftwood of the flood seemed to have jammed up. It was the town of Tekloban, on the northeastern shore of the island of Leyte. I told you not to jam up the place. Sergeant, who's in command here? Oh. Colonel Benson, sir, he's inside. Very well, thank you. I'm going to try to see the colonel. You circulate and see what the score is. Right. We missed it, the American colonel. It's most important. The colonel can't see anybody right now. It's for my cousin. She's very ill. She's at home. If she doesn't go to the hospital at once, she may die. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait your turn. Look, this paper. If the colonel will only sign this paper. Listen, lady, orders are orders. You people stand back. No pushing. Stand back over there. You, you don't understand. My cousin is going to have a baby. She's very sick. There's no doctor anywhere. She must go to the hospital. It's a cesarean baby. Yes, lady, I understand fully, but it's impossible. We can't solve everybody's problem. No, I have to see the colonel. He must sign this paper. Take it easy, miss. I've got my orders. You'll have to wait your turn. What do you want? Oh, Ensign Palmer, Captain. Torpedo Squadron 3. Squadron 3, eh? When did you blow in? Just now, from Cebu. I'd like to see the Colonel for a moment. It's a military matter. MacArthur, no. The Colonel will probably chew my tail off for of this, but okay, go on up. Thank you. Hey, how about you? All right, stand back there. Stand back. Don't push. We can't take care of all of you. Take it easy. Colonel Benson? Yeah? Ensign Palmer, sir. Torpedo Squadron 3. Where did you come from? I just walked in from Cebu, Colonel. On your hands and knees? Oh, practically. Well, what's your beef? Seaman Mitchell and I'd like to get to Del Monte Airfield on Mindanao, sir. What for? Japs took that strip ten days ago. Save you boys a long trip. You can stay right here and surrender. Surrender? I just received orders to surrender all our forces on this island at 20 hundred tonight. Well, does that include us? It does if you're here. In the meantime, we're having a little party here tonight. Why don't you boys stick around and help us drink a little barbed wire? Well, it, it sounds fascinating, Colonel, but I personally have had enough of barbed wire. Have you got a better idea? Well, I thought if I could get a boat, I'd have another shot at Australia. What kind? Motor. There aren't any. Well, maybe sailboat. A sailboat? To Australia? Do you know how far it is to Australia? Oh, 1,200 miles, I'd say. It's closer to 1,300. Besides, boats cost money. How much have you got? $40 American and about 10 pesos. Palmer, I used to think the Navy had some brains, but I'm certainly beginning to doubt it. However, in the interest of inter-service harmony, maybe we can stand a little touch. Say, uh, 2,000 pesos. Colonel, that's very generous. Don't huh? mention it. It's only money. Of course, if the Japs find out about this, they'll probably sue me. But good luck to you, Palmer. Anchors away. Thank you, Colonel. By the way, go down to the end of the corridor and see Lieutenant Gibbs. Tell him I said to give you an issue slip for some new clothes. 
We can't have the Navy running around looking like that. The Admiral might not like it. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Colonel, I know you're swamped, but I happen to overhear something outside that I think is rather urgent. Everything is urgent. Well, sir, this is about a... A, a girl. girl. Well, yes. Or, or rather, her cousin. She's going to have a baby. It's a cesarean. Well, that's all we need right now, a cesarean. But if you could see her for just a minute, she only wants you to sign a paper. Good looking, eh? Well, all right, Palmer, send her up. A pretty face may help take my mind off tonight. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Colonel. Good luck, Palmer. Captain. He will. Oh, lady. Oh, lady. You can go up now. Hey, Chuck. Chuck, over here. Thank you, Captain. First door to the right, top of the stairs. These guys are from the ground crew at Del Monte Airfield. They just blew in. Tell him what's up, bud. No, you don't need to. I just got it from the Colonel. Any of you fellas want to go to Australia? Australia? Yeah, sure. Well, you said it. All right, we're leaving tonight. Anybody wants to ship on. Leaving how? By sailboat. Sailboat? Say, are you nuts? What do we know about sailboats? We're in the Air Corps. We're Army guys. All right. I got 2,000 pesos to buy a boat and stock it. Otherwise, it's a Jap concentration camp. What do you say, Jim? Yeah, but a sailboat... Well, you want to get back to that gas station in Pocatello, don't you? <laughs> sure, but Well, I... then this is your chance. Come on, you fellas. Make up your minds. Well, what have we got to lose? I'd rather drown than starve to death in Jap boat pen. Okay, let's go. Suits me. I'm in. All right. Here's a thousand pesos. It's for supplies. I'll give you a list of what we need. Make every nickel count. I'll take care of the boat. We'll meet on the dock at 1800 sharp. All right, move on. Coconuts, bananas, mangoes, dried fish, kerosene, milk. Milk? Hey, wait a minute, what's this? 375 pesos for 25 pint cans of milk? You said get milk, we got it. Yes, but that's about $10 a can. There's a war on. Chuck. <laughs> Look what I found. Ain't he cute? Yes, yeah, and plump, too. <laughs> oh, he'll roast good. What? You mean you'd eat Wilmer? To the last point. Stow him aboard. Then lash him down up forward. You fellas better get a move on with the rest of this gear here. Mr. Palmer! Mr. Palmer! I want to thank you for what you did for us this morning. Oh, it was nothing. My cousin would have died if he hadn't for you. Now she has a son. A boy? Oh, that's great. Give her my congratulations. Thank you. Are you really going to Australia on a bunker? That's the intention. It's the wrong time of the year. The southwest monsoons are blowing. Well, it's either that or the Japs. Have you sailed a bunker before? No. Have you? Many times. Well, why don't you come with us? Oh. Can you cook? Yes, I can cook. Well... But someone has to stay here and fight. With what? Pop guns? Besides, what could a good-looking girl there like you... There are many you... places one can hide in the hills. Hide? Who wants to hide? My country is sinking and everyone's running away. Look, lady. It cost the United States government $2,650 to make a sailor out of me. Now, perhaps in Australia I can find the type of fighting I was trained for. I think it's wrong. The war is here. If you really want to fight, here is where you can help us most. You know, for someone who's not a Filipino, you're certainly getting yourself all worked up. I'm French, but this is my home. These are my people. I shan't run away. I'll stay here and fight as long as I can. All right, that's your privilege. I'm sorry if I've offended you. I had no right to speak to you as I did. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Chuck. It's about 1800. How about shoving off? All right. Goodbye. As they say in the Philippines, God run with you. Thank you. You're sure you won't come with us? No. Goodbye. Hey, fellas, give us a hand with these planks, will you?
Hoist the sheet. What's he mean, this sheet? I never heard of a sheet. Get the lead out. Hoist the sail, the sail. Okay, you land lovers. I'll show you how. Here, Ozzy. Take the line. Pull it. Now watch it there. Don't let it fall up. Come on, these things sticking out of the water. Yes, me, there goes only smart guy in this boat. The young lady was right. We lasted about 72 hours. I've seen some pretty good storms in Kansas, but brother, we've had it. It's called a Chabasco. They come up all of a sudden. Oh, they do. Well, at least we're all here. Yes, sir. Aye, aye, sir. What gives now? Well, it looks as if we'll have to swim for it. How far out are we? About eight miles, I judge. Eight miles? That's far enough than I can walk. I'm not going to ask any of you fellas to try it if you don't want to. Chances are a Jap boat will come along and rescue you. Let's get going. Good. Oh. Right for me. Oh. Not me. I can't swim a leg. Me neither. Not me, brother. Not eight miles. OK. If any of us make it, we'll send a boat out for you. Well, the Navy tells us that once you start, don't stop to rest. Otherwise, your muscles will bunch up on you. Come on in, you guys. The water's fine. Take it easy. Any man who wastes his breath talking or shouting gives himself just that much less chance to live. Yes, sir. Take it easy. What time you reckon it is? About noon. Bottom. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Chuck. I can't take a step. You've got to. I can't move my legs. We'll try. That tide will be coming in a few minutes, and then we'll have to walk further than ever. I can't. If I start, I'll just fall down and drown. Well, then swim. I can't swim either. I can't budge my muscles. <laughs> I can't move at all. We'll try it. You can do it. You've got to. It's no use, Joe. It's no use. I'm done. Wait. Here. I'll help you. No. That's funny. I can't move either. 
But we just can't stand here. Good job. Hey. Look. A boat. Oi. 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 Filipinos! Help him first. The man is you, sir. Fishing village on Lady, sir. Lady? That's where we started from. It's better not to talk, sir. You, you got all ten of us? Nine are here only, sir. Our men are still searching. Who are you? I am Miguel, sir. I teach in the school. Japs. Don't worry, sir. The Japs are far away, eight kilometers. They were here. They searched our houses, then they made a speech and went away. But surely your people know that the Japs will kill you if you hide Americans. My people know. He was far out in the water when I found him. In this room. You have a doctor in the village? The doctor's very far away, sir, three days. Lie down, sir. Please, lie down. He was one of our men. I didn't know him very long, but he was a good man. He didn't ask to come out here. Maybe he didn't die fighting bullets, but at least he died trying to keep himself in the war rather than surrender. That's all I know about him. But maybe it'll be a comfort to all those who love him. Okay, Miguel, you can take over now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Go, Japanese. Quick! Wait, wait! The Japanese may construe this as uh, a rebellion. I'll turn the body over to them and explain it. The American is buried, and you will not tell. Come. Come on. Come Welcome. Welcome to our village. The Americans, they are here? They have gone, sir. Where? Back there, sir. To the mountains, sir. We have come to rescue you from them. Sir, you flatter us. You are too good to us only, sir. Banzai! Now, will you help us find the Americans? Sir, you cannot find them. They have vanished into thin air. There is no finding them. You and your children will die if you hide the Americans. 
Sir, we do not hide them. They came with guns. We have no guns. They stayed with guns. We had no guns to make them go. Now you come with guns and they have run away. Where did they go? Who knows where the American goes? You, that is speak the truth. It is as he says. The Americans were here, but stayed only one hour, sir. Any Filipino who protect an American will be shot. The Philippines are now part of the Japanese Empire. Where are you going, Juan? I was not going anywhere. I just came down to look at my boat. You were going to tell the Japanese about the Americans. I swear, I swear I wasn't. You know I won't lie. I swear it. Sit down, please. We have brought you something. It is a chicken. Eat it. Eat all of it. All? Oh. I can't. You're a fifth columnist and a bad man. We're gonna kill you. No, it's not true. You can't kill me. Oh, no, no, don't shoot. I won't tell the Japanese, I swear it. Through the summer and fall of 1942, we were constantly on the land, never knowing from one hour to the next where we'd end up. More and more Japs had come into the Philippines and their patrols were never idle. Bamboo Americans, the Filipinos called us, as we began to look more and more like a bunch of scarecrows and cutthroats. As yet, the idea of fighting back, of killing Japs, frankly, had not even occurred to us. We were too busy just keeping alive. But there was mounting restlessness among us. We were beginning to become unraveled and at loose ends. I figure if there hasn't been any slip up, the government owes me close to $800 in back pay. $796.46 to be exact. You should let this spend it. Uh, I aim to. I haven't been peddling gas back home all these years to let that jerk cousin of mine take over. I got a lot picked out, right on the best corner in Pocatello. Yockety, yockety, yock. We'll be ducking around these woods the rest of our life. Ain't that right, Palmer? Not me. I'm a city boy myself. This country life's beginning to get me down. I'm for heading north again. Back to where we started from? Possible. A little closer around the years, Mac. Hey, I never thought of this. Suppose the government figures I'm dead and gives all that back pay to that jerk cousin of mine. They can't do it. I'll sue them. <laughs> I will, I'll sue them. <laughs> oh, 
Patrol! Yeah, Patrol! Asky, Osborne, keep me covered. That was the first moment of real satisfaction we had had in seven and a half months. We had killed our first Japs. Sometimes you've probably thought that the people back in America had forgotten you. But you're wrong. MacArthur will be back one of these days, and he'll drive the Japs clear out of these islands, right back where they belong. What's all this? Meanwhile, we Americans who are already here, we've, we've decided that it's up to us to do whatever we can until MacArthur does get back. Of course, there aren't many of us, and we haven't got much to give. No guns, no bullets, no medicine, not even a place to sleep. Nothing but faith in what we're fighting for, the freedom of the Philippines. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Now I'm going to ask my boys to pass among you. and. If you love your country as much as we do, if you want your children and their children to be free, now's your chance to prove it. Give us the money to buy the things we need, and we'll do the rest. Has got something. Yeah, it looks like the real stuff. Maybe. Let's go have a talk with him. Hey, soldier. Hi. Palmer's my name. I'm Navy. Most of the other fellows are Army. We figured that if you were getting a real war started, why, we'd sort of like to join in with you. Sorry, we're not taking any enlistments right now. Maybe later on, if things work out, why, we'll find a spot for you. See you, boy. Hey, Mac! What a swell bunch of patriots. Look at this joke. Shut up. Let's get out of here. to make a buck out of every war. Well, of all the dirty, low-down rackets, no wonder they don't want no one muscling in. Now, listen. We're getting nowhere. Look at us. Speaking for myself, I've run just as far as my legs are going to carry me. Now, I still have about 200 pesos left. 
What do you say that we try to find another boat? Take a crack again at Australia. Nothing doing. Call me out, brother. Me too. Okay. You can do as you please, but if I find the banker, I'm getting out of here. One moment, please. You spoke just now of a boat in which to go to Australia. Perhaps uh, I can be of assistance. Oh, I see. You, uh, you have a boat you want to sell. It is not wise to speak here in the square, senor. No one knows who may be a fifth columnist. If you'll come to my home in an hour, here is my address. We will talk. Good day, gentlemen. Hey, how do we know this Joe's not a fifth columnist himself? We don't. Oh, senor. Martinez? Please, gentlemen, you're respected. Gentlemen, will you please wait here? Thank you. Hey, Chuck. Get a load of this. Isn't that her? Yes, it is. You? I had no idea. I often wondered. Well, it's nice to see you again, Mr. Palmer. <laughs> Both of you. I can't get over it. I was just trying to figure out how to get in touch with you. We just got back into town and... Well, we're expecting someone, a naval officer. Well, I admit I <laughs> hardly look like a naval officer. Won't you come in? <laughs> Thank you. Auntie, Luke, it's Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palmer. Good afternoon, Senora. It's nice to see you again. Uh, may I present Jim Mitchell? Senor. Hello. And this is my cousin, Senora Romero. Mr. Palmer, Mr. Mitchell. How do you do? Very well, Senor. And my son, too, thanks to you. If my husband were here, he would wish to thank you, too. But he was in Bataan. It's nice to know you at last. Thank you. We have often thought of you, senor, but you left for Australia. Well, I'm afraid we didn't get very far, though. The monsoons hit us the third day out. But the Lord has been gracious. You are alive and well. As alive as one can be, hiding in the hills. <laughs> ah, senores, you found my place. I didn't have an opportunity to introduce myself in the square. I'm Juan Martinez. I'm Chuck Palmer, and this is Jim Mitchell. Hello, senor. Senor? Juan, Mr. Palmer is the American officer who helped us when Maria had to go to the hospital. Oh. Well, uh, then you already know my wife and family. I've long wished to thank you, Mr. Palmer. We are deeply in your debt. Oh, it, it's... Uh... My wife has told me many times about you, how kind you were. Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Senor Martinez, I, uh, I didn't know that your wife was... Well, your wife. To me, she was just a beautiful lady in distress. Uh, you spoke about a boat. Oh, yes. The boat. I have made arrangements for you to meet the one man that can advise you. He's some distance away. Shall we go? Well, whenever you're ready. What is, uh, is this... Oh, that, that's all right. We'll take care of that. Fine. Well, it's nice to have seen you again, Senora. This way, please. Good Good luck again to both of you. Goodbye. So long. Thank you. Colonel de Malanta, these are the Americans about whom I spoke. Ensign Palmer and Senor Mitchell of the American Navy. Why do you wish to go to Australia? So that we can rejoin our outfit, or what's left of it, and get back into the war. 
you realize that our waters are patrolled by the Japanese? That what you suggest is extremely dangerous. Well, I know we'd be taking a chance, Colonel, but I don't see much difference in that and being chased all over lately. I shall be very glad to advise you where to get a boat, gentlemen. If, in exchange, you will do me and the cause of Filipino freedom a great service. You name it, Colonel. I have received word that a certain Colonel Phillips of the United States Army has organized guerrillas in Mindanao and has been in contact with General MacArthur. And he is attempting to unify all guerrilla activities in the Philippines. So far, I've been unable to communicate with Colonel Phillips to let him know that we here on Leyte are prepared to join in the undertaking. It's an extremely difficult journey. First, one must go by water across the Gulf of Leyte and overland through the, the Wata Mountains and into the jungles where Colonel Phillips is believed to have set up headquarters. I have sent three of my men to contact him, and all have failed. If you, an American officer, and your friend will undertake this mission, I'm sure Colonel Phillips will find a way to send you on to Australia. You drive a hard bargain, Colonel. I have no choice. I must contact Colonel Phillips. What do you say, Jim? At least it's no worse than going by Banca. We will supply you with guns and ammunition, and we will do everything we can to help you. OK, Colonel. When do we start? With luck, tonight. Spurred on by a crazy hope of eventual escape to Australia, we set out in the stolen motorboat across the Gulf of Leyte, down through the Strait of Surigao, traveling by night only and out of the lanes of Japanese shipping. By day we slept in carefully camouflaged hideouts, taking turns at keeping watch, stealing a can of gasoline here and a can there, provisioned by friendly Filipinos who were always glad to lend a hand, moving steadily southward, always with the hot breath of the Japs on the backs of our necks, until finally, our voyaging done, we moved by nightmare routes into the heart of Mindanao, into a world we had never known existed. Three conquering heroes, stumbling along, footsore and weary, 
gnawed at by insects, dirty and torn and disheveled, the blind leading the blind. If and when I ever get out of this place, I'm gonna hang one on so that 10 years later, I'll get tight just thinking about it. Dilly, Dilly, Dilly! What's he saying? That he's a farmer. Ask him if there are any Japanese around here. Do you know Baya Pondini? Who's that? Do you know Baya Pondini? Where are you Pondini? He says no, no people here at all. Tell him we're Americans. Americanos, Americanos. Americanos? Ask him if he's ever heard of an American colonel named Phillips on Mindanao. Pakaibo lo baka maugdo na kita wag Coronel Phillips tine sa Mindanao. Coronel Phillips? Coronel Phillips? Coronel Phillips? Hey, cut that out! Mga Amerikano sila, nangingita kang Coronel Phillips. Hey, what do these guys do? They shoot, sir, they shoot. I heard you the first time. <laughs> hey, Mac, these must be a couple of those American guerrillas we heard about. I told you we took the wrong turn. This ain't the Philippines, it's Africa. And Tarzan himself. Wait, Jeff. Excuse me, buddy. But if my memory serves me right, that thing you got in your mouth is a stateside butt. Look, they can talk, too. I shall return, Douglas MacArthur. That's a new brand, ain't it? You got a match? Where are you from, sailor? Macon, Georgia. You will make some of it? No, no, he means how did you get here? We swam in. Did I answer your question? Okay, sailor. You may come in, sir. Say, who's he? Him? Oh, just a Navy officer, that's all. He's up there. Colonel Phillips? Come in. Ensign Palmer, sir, Torpedo Squadron 3. Where the devil did you come from? Uh, Colonel De Milanta, sir, he, he's organizing the guerrilla movement on Leyte. How is the old boy? Oh, just fine. What's he want? Sit Let's down. Take... Thank you. Like a drink of water? Thank you, Colonel. Well, what's he want? To tell you, Colonel, that if you'll supply the arms and ammunition, he'll take care of the Japs on Leyte. Now listen, Palmer. You tell Colonel de Milana for me that we don't care if he never kills a Jap. What General MacArthur wants is a spy service, a civil government, intelligence, a people's army ready to act when we're ready and not before. You get that? Yes, sir. All right, then. Go on back up there and tell Colonel de Milana I said to get going. Later on, we'll want to establish a string of radio stations up and down the coast, so that every time a Jap sneezes, General MacArthur will know about it. But first, get organized. Understand? Well, yes, sir. But I hadn't planned on returning to Lady. The only reason I came here was that Colonel de Milanda said you'd help me get to Australia. We don't want men in Australia. We want them here. You want to help win the war, don't you? Oh, yes, sir, of course. Fine. What do you know about radio? Nothing. Never mind. Here's a radio manual. Study it. I've got a couple of boys here who can teach you the fundamentals. Later on, you'll be in charge of radio operations on Lady. Who, me? Yes, you. That'll save bringing in an extra man all the way from Australia by submarine. 
You'd be surprised at the plans we've got for a few bright, steady young men like you, Palmer. Yes, sir. Thus it came about that the provincial government of Free Leyte, as authorized by President Quezon and General MacArthur, was established under the very noses of the enemy. We were starting from scratch, but the people of Leyte were quick to respond, offering what they had freely and generously. Parts of broken down automobiles, lubricating oils, firearms, wrapping paper, gunny sacks, bolts and nuts by the hundreds, curtain rods, scraps of metal, anything and everything that could conceivably be of use to an army and a government in the making. Great indeed was our joy when occasionally an old storage battery turned up on the junk heap. Never were there enough of these. And when we did find one, we treated it as if it were precious metal, as indeed it was, hovering over it, testing it, and then congratulating ourselves on our good fortune when and if it responded and came alive. As in every army and in every government, we needed money. To get it, we had to print it. A jeweler who did engraving on the side made the wood blocks for us, using Colonel Phillips's Mindanao money as a model. Because the need was great, we resorted to an assembly line. Here, one man would cut the paper to size, another would place it in a frame, stamp it into a pad of ink made of glycerin and lamp black, then press it onto the paper. Some of our money was printed on wrapping paper, some on grade three notebook paper, lines and all. But it looked like money, it felt like money, and it served the greatest use of all. It passed for money. Later on, we even published our own newspaper, getting our scant bits of news from a few hidden radios and reading the paper aloud in 500 villages each week. Until now, communications, such as they were, had depended on runners. Now we used barbed wire from the fences, stretched it, rolled it and hung it from tree to tree using old soda pop bottles as insulators. Until within six weeks, we had strung 150 kilometers of telegraph wires. Needing gasoline, we operated nine stills to make alcohol out of palm juice and got six miles to the gallon. But running automobiles was not its only use. Drinking gasoline, we called it, because it could be and sometimes was used for purposes other than those for which it was intended. Our first guns were made of two pieces of water pipe, one fitting over the other. Our bullets of old curtain rods, our powder came mostly from Japanese sea mines, sulfur, saltpeter, and antimony. And when they were finished, we fired them. So. We even made a cannon of a three-inch pipe with a tapered marlin spike for a firing pin and a lanyard 30 yards long for protection. An added thought which, as it turned out, proved of immense value. Finally, we organized an army and trained men in guerrilla warfare, practiced the art of spear throwing in case guns and bullets ran out, learned to hack our way through bamboo jungles in carrying out night patrols, to make maps and to read them, to administer first aid, cut and sew sharpened bamboo stakes as booby traps along the roads leading into towns, so the Japanese patrols, when fired upon, would throw themselves on the stakes and thus be impaled. In short, we built an army, restored a government, and over and above everything else, sought to imbue the people with an unconquerable faith in an inevitable victory. It was not all war, however, nor even preparations for war. The Filipinos loved parties as much as anybody, and there were always native bands refugeeing from the big towns ready to donate their time and talents to raising money for the poor soldiers.
happy way to break an ankle. Hey, Chuck. Come here. See that babe in the purple dress? Yeah. Would you say that's a tasty dish, sir? Oh, very tasty dish, sailor. Excuse me. Could I have this dance? Senora Martinez. Mr. Palmer. So, we meet again. Yes. Yes, we do. Would you like something to eat? No, no thanks. It's very good. I'm, I'm the sure comedy. <laughs> Don't you dance? When I'm asked. You're asked. <laughs> here or is that a leading question? He promised to come in later. Do you have to sit over there too? <laughs> no. Marriage gives one many privileges. If you don't mind my saying so, that's a very attractive dress. Thank you. My husband bought it for me when I first came here five years ago. Well, you wear it like a native. You've uh, been here only five years, huh? Yet my husband says I'm more of a Filipino than he is. Oh, yes. I seem to remember your views on that subject very well. That day on the dock, for instance, when we set out for Australia. I was rude? No, let's say firm. But I guess you thought I was pretty bullheaded. Bullheaded? Stubborn. Are you? Well, so I've been told. <laughs> Yet you're still here, in the islands. Well, that just goes to show you what bullheadedness will get you. Or maybe it was your arguments. My husband tells me that you've been very helpful to Colonel de Malanta. Senior Martinez is very active in the guerrilla movement, isn't he? Yes. It couldn't be otherwise. And you? I do what I can. This great desire you had to leave the Philippines, to go home. You have a wife there? No. No, I'm not married. A girl? Or is that too a leading question? No, I, I'm not engaged either, if that's what you mean. I know so very little about you, and yet you know everything about me. Well, hardly everything. All there is. My husband, my family, my background. And you? Oh, there's... There's very little to tell. I, I kicked around a lot. My father and mother were separated when I was a kid. Mother taught school. It seemed to me that we were forever moving. I was always the new boy on the block. That meant that you had to take what came along, whether you liked it or not. Well, I never could learn to like it. Maybe that's why I could never hold a job for very long or, or settle down. I was the restless type. And now? Now, now I'd settle for a roof over my head and a nice, easy chair on the front porch. Shall we finish our dance? I'd rather stay right out here. 
I think we should dance. Good evening. Hello, my dear. Major, I thought you were an ensign. Well, ensign in the Navy, major in the Army, it's the same rank. How are you, sir? It's a pleasure to see you again. I've just come from Colonel de Malanta. He informed me that you were here having your morale lifted. She asked me to say that the football has arrived and that the game is on as scheduled. Oh, that's great news. Thank you, sir. Well, it seems I'm always saying goodbye. And I'm always wishing you good luck. Good night, senor. Good night. Good night. Good night, Major. He's a very attractive young man. Yes, very. Colonel de Malanta thinks very highly of him. Gives you a lump in the throat, don't it? To know that Uncle Sam hasn't forgotten us after all. Well, it'll sort of give you a lump on the big toe, too, if you drop one of these. Mr. Palmer. Oh, yes, sir. I've just come from the submarine. Your orders from Colonel Phillips are to organize a radio network on Lady to Report on Japanese shipping. Oh, how many radio sets did they send? Four. Good. Uh, but unfortunately, the crates were lost overboard with some of our other equipment. Lost overboard? You will have to use whatever equipment you can find until the next shipment comes in. I don't know anything about setting up a radio station, Colonel. I, I, I wouldn't know where to begin. There must be some radio operators, some engineers who can't help you. Talk to them. Talk to Senor Martinez. I'm sure he'll help. General MacArthur has a one-track mind when it comes to intelligence. He wants information on Japanese shipping. It's up to you to get it to him. Yes. I saw Senor Martinez, and he did give us help. Great help. In spite of this, however, it took us a good month to round up the equipment necessary to put a single station on the air. From a rice mill, we commandeered an engine. From the last surviving movie theater, a generator. Our batteries and electrical equipment we borrowed from automobiles. The gasoline, we made ourselves. The result wasn't especially pretty to look at, but it was a radio transmitter. It worked. And so at last, by the grace of God, Lady was ready, except for code and call signs, to go on the air. We'll keep working and we've got to get somebody. What do we tell him, sir, if we get anybody? Tell him I'm not dead. Get it? Not dead. And be sure they don't send my paychecks to that jerk cousin of mine. Yeah, tell them what a pleasure it is to be up here and how much fun we're having. Radio wa konuku iki desu yo. The answer, sir. Who? Who is it? Where's it from? San Francisco. San Francisco? Lieutenant, I have an unidentified station. Yeah, where from? They say Leyte in the Philippines. Leyte? They want us to take a message, but say they haven't a code. Tell them to identify themselves by name. We'll check with headquarters just in case it's some Jap outfit that picked up some dog tags. The man claims to be Ensign Charles Palmer, United States Naval Reserve. Maybe. Hmm. So did they receive. They say they want to get the date of your father's birth and the color of your mother's eyes, sir. They want what? The, 
the date of your father's birth. Oh, oh yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. He's, he's 52. 52. 1890. 18... No, stop. 1991. November 13th, 1891. Gray Brown. What do you know? San Francisco. Say, we're almost home. Maybe next time we can get Pocatello. Maybe we could even get a message. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What are they saying now? They say, see you at 1600 for traffic. That's all. That's all. We'll, we'll be here at 1600. We're in business. <laughs> we're in business. Chuck, I'm soaking, I'm soaking, I'm soaking. Yeah, well, when you finish soaking those gunboats, we'd appreciate a hand. Sir, the Japanese are coming. How much time have we got? None, sir. They're coming right now, sir. Grab everything you can. Usanes! Where's the American radio? I do not know, sir. Where have the Americans gone? Who knows where the Americans go, sir? They vanish into the sky, sir. Stand! Let 
entrer. Reçois de quoi Un coup Soit tu montres le taquet This is the house of Juan Martinez? Yes. You are his wife? I am. Where is your husband? In his bedroom, asleep. He doesn't feel well. So good. Shall I call him? No, no, that won't be necessary. Hey, Martinez, where are you? You follow me. You're acquainted with an American officer by the name of Palmer. I've known many Americans. You attended a dance in Takloban six weeks ago. It's possible. I often go to dances in Takloban. This dance was to raise money for the guerrillas. For the Red Cross. Never mind. But you danced with this man, Palmer. And don't bother to deny it. It is written here. What is it you wish? This man, Palmer. Where is he? I don't know. Where is his radio station? I don't know anything about a radio station. Do you know that there's a 10,000 peso reward for him? I know nothing about it. But you know this man, Palmer? Yes. You like Americans. You like white faces that look like boiled pork. Okay. Ah! You are Juan Martinez? Yes. You are a guerrilla. I am a planter. You've been friendly with the Americans. You've opened your house to the guerrillas. You've provided them with money, food, and radio equipment. I have a full record of everything that you have given. Do you care to hear? It's not necessary. Do you deny that you're a guerrilla? I told you I'm a planter. Where is this American guerrilla named Palmer? You know, the man who comes here to see you. I don't know. Where is his radio station? I don't know. You will tell me! Okay. One! Look! That is the way we treat Gerardus there. Now tell me, where is the American? Where is he? Give in, you go, Piro! After that, it was really touch and go. 
We'd become a tick in the Japs' hide. We'd stung them, and they were quick to hit back, but hard. In ever-increasing forces, they moved into Leyte, beating, murdering, determined at all costs to wipe us out. Occasionally, I caught a brief glimpse of Jean and her aunt in some remote village, for now she too had become a fugitive with a price on her head. But our meetings were never for long, for always there was danger. Even a rumor of our presence in a village was enough to bring death and destruction in reprisal. Christmas Eve with you. Christmas? Had you forgotten? Forgotten? No, I, I had no idea. It's been so long since I've seen a calendar. May I come in? May you come in? You just try and get away. All right. Oh, here I'm. Take this way. How did you know where I was? There are ways of knowing. Look, I brought you a tree. Uh -huh. <laughs> I couldn't find a pine. No one should have Christmas without a tree. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I wanted to. It's not much like other Christmases, is it? better. Much better. For me, too. It will always be the best. I remember one Christmas when I was 12. I got a goat. I always thought that was the most wonderful Christmas in the world. <laughs> Till now. I remember when I was 12, too. We'd left our shoes in front of the fireplace then. Your shoes? Uh-huh. In France, we don't hang up our stockings. Just put our shoes in front of the fire. And then we went to midnight mass. And after that, the réveillon. What's that? Um, something very special when you're 12. Kind of after midnight supper. Oysters and white wine. <laughs> I remember when my father said I might come to my first réveillon. I felt very grown up. And then in the morning, after Père Noël, your Santa Claus had come. We sat on the floor around the fire and sang. Il est né le divin enfant, jouis au poire et vané musette. Il est né le divin enfant. Chantons tous son avènement. Nous attendions cette 
Chuck! Chuck! You wait here. Jim! It's Miguel! What? The Japs got him going into the village. Bad? They bayoneted him. Somehow he managed to crawl all the way back with his stomach split open. I'll bring him inside. Okay. Watch him there, Garcia. All right, now take him off the stretcher. Put him on the cot. Easy. What are we going to do? What can we do? There isn't a doctor within 50 miles. Then you'll have to do it yourself. Me? Are you crazy? Someone has to do it. But I'm not a doctor. I don't know about this sort of thing. It's a cinch he can't live with his intestines hanging out. We can't just let him lie here and die. Well, some people would rather die in peace than be mauled around. No one prefers to die. Chuck. I will help. Okay. If he's willing, I'll do what I can. How can he not be willing? Ask him. Wishes you good luck. See if there's any hot water in the kitchen. Here's some sulfur thigh soap. Pulverize it. Are those stones good and hot? Yes. We'll probably need them later to wrap it up. And a blanket to keep him warm. Now, open that bottle of antiseptic. Board over my hands. Get all the soap. That's fine. I'll bring that soap with that soap. Left. We'll save it and give it to him when he can't stand the pain any longer. Gene, bring this in the cotton. That bowl. Take off his shirt. dead. Well, what'd you expect? I told you I didn't know anything about this sort of thing.
I shall return. MacArthur. Next week, East Lynn. But he will. I know he will. When? When we're all smoked and cured and hung out to dry? I don't know when, but he will come, Chuck. The chaps can't go on forever. Well, neither can we. Chuck, I know how you feel. I know how much Miguel meant to you. But you can't give up now. You can't lose hope. hope. You have to go on. Miguel had hope. And look at him now, lying in there with his stomach open. But if we lose hope, we lose everything. Though dreary weeks and months still lay ahead, that Christmas somehow marked the beginning of a change on Leyte. For one thing, our subs were coming in regularly now bringing with them guns and all manner of supplies. For another, our guerrilla armies were going on the offensive everywhere. Big things we knew were in the wind. But as to when MacArthur would return, well, that was as big a question as it had ever been. Take a look at this, sir. Oh, no, they can't mean it. Maybe they are only trying to scare us, sir. If they are, they're sure doing a good job of it. Hey, Chuck! Chuck! Get a load of this! orders from General MacArthur that we're to set up an observation post where we can watch chaps shipping in the channel and plot the minefield. It's your side. That's behind the chap lines. What am I going to do? Say, I'm sorry, I've got a date. I love you. Oh, John. the down payment on next Christmas. Stand by. Two large wolves on the 20-yard line going down center field. Bearing 091. Distance 1,600 yards. Bearing 091, distance 1,600 yards. Time. 1021. Time, 1021. It's what should I say? Estimated course 350. Estimated speed 25 knots. Estimated course 350. Estimated speed 25 knots. They're really traveling. Stand by. Distance 1,400 yards, bearing 076. Distance 1,400 yards, bearing 076. Time 1023. Time 1023. So do you This is it. Not enough. Hey, what is this man's name? Palmer, sir. Well, tell Palmer well done and beat it out of there. Yes, sir. They say well done, sir. Beat it out. They say well done, sir, and beat it out. Well, that's it. Carry that line back and secure the other equipment. I'll take care of the phone. Aye, aye, sir. Jim, we got the 
radio. Let's get out of here. Okay, come on. Like Pocatello, I know. Come on. You like some more chocolate, too? ま、でけましたか。え?ただいま、あの、証券名に戦争。あのさよ、パンガラン。ちんちとぽ。ポンシド。うん、いかおな、メロン、エロンタン。ビンタトロ。ビンタトロ。あれがかい。チョコラテ
said he'd return, didn't he? Planes! Get your head down, you fool. I don't think the Japs have that many, do you? Will they drop bombs, sir? Don't worry. When Americans drop bombs, they hit Japs, not us. I hope. Chuck, what do we do now? Stay here or go and reinforce MacArthur? Listen, sailor, for three years we've waited for him. Let him come to us. is coming. It's a welcome to him only. But I'm sure he'd like to see the Filipino flag. You think so? Pepe, go to the vestry and bring out our flag. Yes, father. Sir, I have been saving this for three years for the liberation. They are for you, sir. Oh, thank you. No, I could... You're very kind. We should like to very much. Forgive me, sir, the warm, sir. We've had no ice for a long time. Great. I wouldn't care if they were boiling. Can you beat it? For three years now, I just sold my... Sold for one of these. Whoop. 
And now, just when General MacArthur brings the whole United States here... Oh, 